Welcome to the show. I'm Emmett Short. Lab-grown meat is in the news. An Israeli company called Future Meat Technologies created a futuristic meat technology. Great name. Future Meat Technologies is excited to announce the world's first industrial line for cultured meat. This is a big enough topic for an entire episode of Knee of the Curve. Check out my latest episode on the laws of exponential growth. It's actually relevant to today's topic because Future Meat Technologies just announced that their strategy for lab-grown meat is going to harness the power of rights law and Metcalf's law to lower the cost of production while increasing the value of their platform. There's a lot of questions to be answered here. How does it taste? How much does it cost? How do they make it? Why are hamsters involved? Seriously, is this the pinnacle of GMO food? Can you taste the microchips they use to track me? Anyway, I'm gonna tell you the news and give you my take on this episode of. So in case you're like, why do we want lab-grown meat? Is this important? Well, it turns out livestock is responsible for 15% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And the World Economic Forum has said that the population could come close to 10 billion by 2050, causing demand for meat to rise by as much as 88%. So Future Meat was founded in 2018, and their mission is to reduce the environmental impact of eating meat. The company says its manufacturing model will reduce land use by 99% and emit 80% less greenhouse gas than traditional meat production. First off, I just wanna play you the video released by Future Meat Technologies. Have you ever stopped to think about how can we feed people without wrecking their home world? Sure. Can we really cut on air and environmental pollution? Great touch getting a tiny child's voice to be the voice of the, the future, telling us about the problems. This is great marketing, classic problem solution. Let's uh, let's keep going. Is wasting fresh water avoidable? I mean, you still need water to grow biomass in a industrial setting, but probably a lot less. What about animals? What about Are animals? they really necessary to consume protein? Or maybe there is a real solution for my generation. Solution. Future meat. Look at this facility. I'm Professor Yaakov Nachmeas. I'm the founder and CSO of Future Meat Technologies. We are certain there is a different way of feeding the planet. Future Meat Technologies is excited to announce the world's first industrial line for cultured meat. This facility can produce meat that is GMO free. Okay, what? GMO free? This is maybe the most GMO food that you could imagine. I mean, they're literally taking animal cells, just the cells, and culturing them up in a Petri dish and then a vat. And so, I, I mean, maybe they're not tinkering with the genes, I guess. Is that what they're saying? But this is like the most science-y food ever. So I can't imagine the people that are against genetically modified food going, oh, he says it's GMO free, this meat that comes out of a soft serve. Uh, <laughs> those people going, yeah, yeah, no problem. Oh, GMO free, cool. Uh, no, they should go into more detail on why they're saying this is GMO free. Without antibiotics or animal serum. Me That's a big one, no animal serum. But uh, there's something that we'll get to later about that. Delicious, safe healthy and affordable. This facility can produce up to 500 kilograms of cultured meat a day, equivalent to 30 cows a month. It's a cow Pez dispenser. Our unique recycling technology makes this facility sustainable, scalable, but most importantly, cost effective. They said recycling technology. I think that needs a lot of clarification because, um, you know, what kind of Things are they recycling? Recycled cows? What kind of waste is going into my food? This technology can feed the entire world. It is a giant leap for all mankind, ensuring the future of all coming generations. Okay, so the cool thing about this is that Future Meat Technologies is trying to bring lab-grown meat, cultured meat to the masses 
and they've got to get the cost down. So they're doing it at scale. They're creating these big facilities. And that's why they're going to benefit from Wright's law, which states that for every doubling of a product production, price comes down because we create efficiencies. We learn how to do it better. But what's also interesting about their approach is they're going to benefit from Metcalf's law of network effects as well, because their strategy is to sell the machines to companies so that they can create however much meat they need. So they're going to be creating the machines, the nodes on the network. And Metcalf's law states that uh, for each node on a network, the value of the node and the network grows exponentially. So the more companies buy into doing it the future meat technologies way and they have their machine, their proprietary machine uh, in their burger joint or grocery store, restaurant. Now you've got like uh, an app store where a bunch of companies are competing to add even more value to the network. So in the case of the uh, meat making facilities, the, there could be companies popping up creating new cell culture lines. They're creating new additives for new recipes for different types of meat, different tastes of meat. You got your Wagyu, you got your ostrich, you got who knows what kind of meat they're gonna be creating. Then this opens up types of meat that we've never even had before. You could have companies creating a bunch of raw materials that could be fed into the meat machine made by future meats as more companies adopt their technology their platform grows their network grows and the value that can be created on that platform grows exponentially so the company has not yet released an estimate of a per burger cost but they also have a chicken breast at a cost of $3.90 a piece. The average retail price of a boneless chicken breast in the US is $3.37, so not that much more. But look how fast the cost has already come down. In 2013, everybody went and tasted a, uh, a burger, made big headlines in 2013, the first synthetic burger. And these things cost $330 thousand dollars a patty i don't usually spend that much on a burger maybe on my birthday and now you're getting uh, th they haven't said what the beef costs but if it's anywhere similar close to the chicken that's you know four bucks a, a burger so we're headed in the right direction this is Wright's law in action they haven't perfected the scaffolds to shape it into a perfect ribeye steak, but hopefully that happens before Neuralink makes doing that obsolete. The Matrix is telling my brain that it is juicy and delicious. Future Meats aims to start offering its products in the U.S. by the end of 2022, but they just have to get FDA approval first. This says on top of that, public opinion is another hurdle. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be. Because if people are worried about vaccines having microchips in them, it's gonna to be tough for some of these people that would love to end animal suffering, but are just convinced lab-grown meat is gonna give them 5G. If they could like make little tiny machines that go inside a syringe, they'd be like curing cancer already. It'd be it'd be amazing. We, we should hope for those microchips that small. We could start living forever if they could make microchips that small, but okay. Okay, so one of the big hurdles to creating this technology was figuring out how to get rid of all the toxins that are produced when cells proliferate. And this bioreactor design that is made by Future Meats does exactly that. That's what he says. We have a specific resin to remove toxins from the media that allows cells to continue to grow. So they've got a refrigerator sized bioreactor and a manufacturer could get about a half a ton of meat and fat in about 14 days. And in about a month, growers can make an amount of meat equivalent of two cows a month. That, and a cow, a single cow takes 12 to 18 months to raise for slaughter. In two weeks, you could get the equivalent meat of a month without going through all it takes to raise a cow. This is a total game changer. Now, let's talk about animal serum because most of these cultured meat companies use fetal bovine serum. And that is derived, as you might have guessed, 
from fetuses, cow fetuses. So if you're into lab grown meat because you're into ending animal suffering, then yeah, choose a company that's not feeding you cow abortions. Future Meats does not use fetal bovine serum. According to this article from TechCrunch, while Future Meats doesn't rely on fetal bovine serum to grow its meat products, it does use small molecules derived from Chinese hamster ovaries. Yummy. So I just wonder, how are they getting these hamster ovaries? Are we going through a lot of hamsters to get these the CHO cells? I love how they call them CHO cells and then parentheses, Chinese hamster ovaries. Because yeah, it sounds way better to say CHO cells instead of like, well, we're using Chinese hamster ovaries. Why do they have to be Chinese hamster ovaries? Do any, I mean, can we just use hamster, any hamster ovaries? Are they, are, is there something specific about these Chinese hamsters ovaries? And I, I just wonder if the marketing team was involved when they were discussing which rodent ovary to use. Like we could use rat ovaries, they're very cheap, but then we have to tell people that they're eating rats. Uh, we could use hamsters, much more expensive, but they're super adorable. I think they should use rabbit ovary serum because people are kind of used to the idea that rabbits get eaten, but they're also super adorable and they breed like rabbits, so they're probably cheap. Future Meat Technologies is still a private company. There are a bunch of other companies in this space. Uh, meat Tech, Mosa Meat, Upside Foods, Future Meat, Meatable, Just, Just, Eat Just. That's a weird name. Integriculture. God, that's a bad name. Because animals, Jesus, the names. Future Meat Technologies has received considerable backing from Tyson Foods. They were able to raise 14 million Series A funding. Investors also include S2G Ventures, ADM Capital, Emerald Technology Ventures, Manta Ray Ventures. So if you want to invest in Future Meat Technologies, you're going to have to do it through one of these companies. Anyway, I'm looking forward to this. I would definitely eat lab-grown meat. Would you eat lab-grown meat? Are you excited about this? Are you worried about it? Are you into the animal saving aspect of it or the health aspect of it or the environment aspect of it? Do you think it's a good idea? Let me know in the comments. Are you guys invested in any lab-grown meat companies that I should know about? Please let me know. And I'd love to include them in an entire episode of Knee of the Curve on lab-grown meat. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Peace.